to do it. You will go. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming. I would like to introduce you to a very wonderful man here, Nathan Cabot Hale, who is uh, a far, far greater artist than I will ever be. Do you, do you know him? He's a fantastic sculptor and he's written some wonderful books and you should, he's a fountain of uh, knowledge and wisdom and you please talk with him. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. And I, what I'm amazed at most today is to see everyone has clean socks. <laughs> so you must have known what was going to happen, right? <laughs> Felt like, right. <laughs> it's just like airport security, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as Peter said, I, I'm not a uh, artist as such or a musician. I'm basically, as I've been for most of my life, uh, one form rather of healer, I would call myself as distinct from doctor now, and I find that through the arts, I think I can do more than anything uh, else to really help people. It's interesting because uh, they say that as a, as a Zen monk gets, gets older, he stops talking, I haven't done that yet, <laughs> I'm not saying. Uh, he stops talking and he does much more with art because he feels he can go deeper into somebody with art, with the arts, than he can with, with talking. Because as I'm talking to you now, it's going to your brain. But we really have to put something else into the communication in order to, to go to the heart. My, my dear friend, long deceased now, Ainsley Mears, who was Australia's greatest psychiatrist by far. Um, he, end, he wrote many, many books and he ended up writing everything in the form of, as it were, little poems. Not exactly poems, but you could call them poems. And he said he did this because they got deeper into the person. So his books on, on cancer and meditation and so forth are really in the form of little poems. His earlier books were writing, 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 because through the more artistic you get, and in a sense, poetry is far more artistic than prose, you can get deeper into the person. You can get them to respond at a different level. Now, the, I've been doing art of a sort for many years. But I would never call my artist uh, art myself an art because the last thing I can do is draw. Do you ever say Jackie? I keep thinking there's that Jackie Gleason uh, sketch many years ago, where he is on television trying to sell an apple. Never before your time probably, <laughs> right? and he, and he keeps on television. And here I have a apple. Now the the one thing I can never do is do a. a a painting or a drawing of a apple and say, here is a apple. I cannot draw a apple. I once I I had a, a woman who was very disturbed, and this is before I started to use uh, this particular modality myself, and I had a wonderful sculptor, young man, who was uh, there as well. And I said, what, what can you do to help her? So he spent uh, weeks with her and then she came to see me for months afterwards and she was still with clay sculpting this one A apple which had gone on for months getting the apple more and more perfect. But she didn't change, just the apple changed, but, but she didn't change because it was so obsessive and so compulsive and so judgmental. Now, so for many years now I've been doing uh, things uh, with, uh, with paint, uh, with pencil, which I never thought of as being particularly art because I can't draw. And then I realized it really doesn't matter if you can't draw, it's what you are expressing from inside that matters, not, what, not whether it looks like a apple or not like a apple. And I was very relieved 
to read that Mondrian said the same thing but much better. And he talked about, uh, my words, the tyranny of the subject. That we in point of fact become subject to the subject. I've got to do what the apple tells me to do rather than what's inside me, my muse, my guidance, getting me to do. So I was very relieved to find that all the modern uh, school of art, so much of it has been to not get involved with the subject, but rather what's inside. Photography, I believe, and I love photography, we do a lot of work with photography, is far better to get in touch with the subject. You have to get in touch with the subject with photography. You don't have to at all with art. So I did these for many, many years, and they had various healing qualities that I used in my practice, but I, I never thought that people would want them. And I've just been amazed how people seem to, seem, seem to like them and respond to them. But I'm certainly not a artist. Um, I, I am predominantly a healer who also uses uh, really all the arts as, as modalities of my healing work. So let me tell you about, about the difference between treatment, therapy and healing. Now, uh, you go to the doctor, you get treatment. I was once in uh, allegedly a, a very famous holistic doctor's uh, clinic and I had to wait a couple of hours to, to talk with him and I'm watching the people going into his office and coming out and they all came out the same as they went in except now they had a piece of paper, a prescription. But they were the same people. There'd been no change. And, and I can say, I don't care how long someone stays in my office or how briefly, no one leaves until they have changed. Not they've got a piece of paper, but they are different. So some fundamental change has taken place. Now look at this floor here. You can go to the hardware store and ask, how do I treat wood so it will glow like this? Right? Treatment is doing this for that. You've got a cold, what is the treatment? You've got this, what is the treatment? It can be surgical, medical, whatever it may be, but it's this for that. That's treatment and very important, very, very important, but very, very limited. Now, therapy is different. Therapy is when it comes from the Greek word to be an attendant, to be waiting on. And a therapist, in a sense, is, is attending to the life energy within the person and, and getting it to be stronger so it will promote the healing from within. Right? So that's what therapy is by definition, although rarely is that's how it's used today. Then you have... Uh, beyond that, you've got healing. Now, healing comes from the, uh, the etymology of healing is the same as the word whole, W-H-O-L-E. The, the W is an affectation. The 16th century, they added it for some Shakespearean type reason, but it really is H-O-L-E. So to heal is to make whole. So in which way is a person not whole. 